name is Nicole Hernandez, and I'm a senior. Well, it's finally here, the day you've been waiting for, for 12, 13 years. For some, it couldn't have gone by any slower. But for some, but for others, they wonder, where'd the time go? For me, I just blinked, and I, now I'm here making a goodbye speech to the seniors. School seemed to go by real slow when I was younger, and it, and it dragged all the time, every day, looking at the clock, waiting for the hands to move faster than what they were. But now that you're here, you, you wish you had more time. You wish that you would have done the things. You know, like, I would like to leave high school with no regrets, but unfortunately, I never joined the team like I said I would have, and I never, I never <laughs> brought that grade up like I know I should have, and I never talked to that one person I saw every day for four years like I know I could have. But either way, you can't turn back time now. All you can do is learn from your experience in high school and hopefully it'll make you a better person in the future. And you'll never forget, you know, your teachers, your crazy teachers, the mean teachers, the nice teachers, and all the people you met and it's just an experience that you'll never forget. High school is just one stepping stone in your whole path of life. So now it's time to put one foot in front of the other and step in step to the uh, the next stone. <laughs> okay, um, when Ms. Bethel asked us to write our speech, our valediction, I had no idea how to start it. I first started with writing about high school in general, then moved on to friends, but it wasn't what I wanted, you know. All I knew about this was that it was a speech in which I was saying goodbye to my family, at you guys, to my friends, and to all of my teachers. And I was supposed to say goodbye to some of the memories. Memories like uh, the smell every morning in the cafeteria, the cookie smell, or the pizza smell when you first open the box, or the nasty smells like the strong cologne from the guy sitting next to you, <laughs> or even the human sweat smell coming from the guy's locker room. But even though they're weird things I'm going to remember, I'm going to look back at this as a learning experience and see this as a time where I grew up. And that's all I have to say, but um, I want to thank each one of you guys, because even though you guys don't realize it, you guys have made a difference in my life, and you guys have a place in my heart. And that's something I will never forget. So thank you so much. And one last thing, world, watch out. Here comes class of 2004. <laughs> <laughs> to expect me to tell you what I've learned in high school, spiritually and academically, or some such cliche, cliche business, while mumbling in a monotone voice. I'm sure you're going to expect that each student shares with you a similar topic in the exact same way. But no two speeches can be given in the same way, just as no two students can be the same. Sorry, I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm sure that one of the biggest things you've learned in high school whether you are a student or that you have teach, you're a teacher that has seen this act for years, is that student diversity is not about colors, it's about minds. So being as different as I am, I cannot stand before you and give you an ordinary speech. I personally think that it would be boring for me to stand here and read accounts of my personal life that only would make sense to people who knew me. So I'm going to speak for as many people as I can through the things I have witnessed and have been through from my own perspective of my mind. I would be lying to you if I started my speech like this. We came here as freshmen as little angels, innocent and naive about the world, and then blossomed into beautiful young adults, all thanks to our teachers. I'm sure that the adult faculty here, as well as the students, prefer to keep the other half truth and quiet, but in order to see the beauty, we must first mold the ugly. 
being creatures fresh from junior high school, we entered high school thinking it would be another world of the social pecking order. I'm sure that our teachers were aware of our behavior. That's why they love to joke with one another about the ridiculousness of the freshmen. I apologize that throughout high school, we students talked during your class, and we wouldn't shut up until you teachers threatened to send us to the office with the referral. I'm sorry we female students put on makeup during class, but we thought it was a wonderful way to tell our teachers that to us, they were boring. I'm sorry that you teachers were probably frustrated with us students because we whined and complained about how the volume behind a sphere we couldn't see had anything to do with our lives. I'm sure that as teachers, you are aware that not all students were like this. Some of us actually learned something. I'm also sure that as students, we remember those times of playful mischief. But not all life was good to everyone, teachers or students. I'm sure that as students, we watched our fellow classmates lead lives that we can only shake our heads at or feel pity for. And I'm sure that as teachers, you quietly watched some of those students and felt badly for the lack of knowledge they were suffering from in life. For some of us students, it was either the kid next to us or ourselves. You see, in the beginning, we didn't know who we were. We had an idea. We knew what we wanted, but not really what we liked. Those pretty much sum up the early years. Or shall I correctly call it, in the terms of a metaphor, a race. We meander in the beginning. It's not serious to us. To some of us, it's still not. Our goal is to graduate in the end, or at least we think it is, but really it's about finding ourselves or something close to it to the point that we are satisfied with who we are. We look around and see classmates and friends who are late bloomers. Others, we just think quietly in the back of our heads who we think or know are not ever going to find themselves. To us students, the beginning is about picking up our feet, sometimes even just to shove the other person down, to break them to suck up to the others, to look back, to look right, but not ever feel right inside. We turn our heads and cry and hold out our hands to friends who seem to be lagging behind in the race until they stumble and fall. Our teachers are somewhere along the sidelines, cheering us on like fans, loving the ones who seem to be winning, quietly disliking the fast ones, shoving the others out of the way, and then really weeping for those students who end up falling behind in the race. It is in high school that we learn that it is not the game of passing or failing grades. This is the beginning of the game of life. So once we realized that the social pecking order wasn't going to get us as far as it used to before, we began to wander through the race expecting to find ourselves. Some teachers we found have encouraged us greatly, hoping that the theme of the class they teach us can develop into a healthy hobby for their pupil. Maybe even lead them to a career pursuit other teachers we wrongly hated, for them trying to get us to learn something valuable. And other teachers, like the ones who gave us homework over winter break, well, there was no excuse for them. They were just the Grinch who stole Christmas. But once we realized that our teachers were not there to strike us out for being out of line and make us do the things we didn't want to do, we began to understand that this was their choice in life, to share their knowledge with us, not because they hated us, but because they chose to love a stranger's children. Some of our teachers chose to kindle a delicate flame that was our spirit, often succeeding at places in a student's life where their own parents failed to participate. With this new realization and hope to our attitude about school and life, I'm sure that the people around us, classmates, teachers, friends, and family, began to see that some of us were starting to develop a clear, and level head on our shoulders, and that we let our dreams and ambitions light our way. It took some maturity to help us and some adult responsibility. It's one of the most important things high school teaches you, adult responsibility. So overall, we did learn a few things. Some of the information we learned, we won't carry with us beyond the classroom, and some we will carry with us for a lifetime. Graduating high school does not represent the end of a school era. It's just the next phase because we transitioned into college. But for everyone, it should be the next big step to going out on the journey that adults have been trying to teach us about our entire lives, to simply walk through life. Thank you. Um, I'm Michelle Bauer.
I want to start off with a quote today. With every dark cloud has a silver lining. It's been my quote for the last four years that I've been in high school, actually. And basically, I'm, I'm going to compare graduation to that quote that it may be scary right now, but it's going to be really cool when we're all done and everything. We're going to go to college or wherever else you're going to go through life. And it's just going to be amazing. So every dark cloud does have silver lining. The very first friend that I met at San Juan was Amber. And she's the only friend that I've actually met when I was a freshman that I still talk to as a senior, that I actually talked to throughout the four years. I want to say thank you for sticking around through all I've done and the good time. There's, we did a lot of stuff together. We had prom together. That was awesome. Some of the memorable events. Some of the other things that I remember about high school are the teachers that inspired me to keep going. Miss Twella was the very first teacher I had first period of freshman year, and she was probably the biggest role model throughout high school for me. She was always telling me that I could do it and just keep trying and keep trying. She was just, she had a crazy attitude about everything. And this year, Mr. Meyer was that teacher also. He was always crazy, having fun, but he always kept my head on straight. No matter what I did, he would, he would get down to the bottom and be like, Michelle, this is what you need to do, and that's great. There was good times like the yearbooks and dances and friends and everything. Signing yearbooks at the end of the year brings on sad, sad memories because you're all thinking about leaving and not wanting to go away. But then you realize that there's always next year and even though you won't be here, you'll be somewhere else in the world and those who really mean a lot to you will probably be with you. You won't leave away your friends behind, you'll leave away people you didn't really talk to. It's going to be sad when we all leave each other, but it'll be happy once we're done. We'll be like, yeah, we're done. This is great. We've worked 13 years, and finally now we can, we can go out and get through college and start a career and see what everybody else is like at our 10-year, 20-year high school reunion. It'll be fun. Thank you. All right. I'm Amber Hardeman, and um, when I think back on my years at San Juan High School, I tend to remember the better times rather than the difficult times. They kind of meld together as the same in retrospect. Since I grew up in the area, I thought I would have known more people at San Juan, but it was the opposite. I went to past year for middle school and, and then came to San Juan and met everyone else. And most everyone else um, I knew went to CASA. I was really bummed out that um, that I couldn't follow my friend to the CASA, but since that fateful day or that fateful decision of going to San Juan, I have made many wonderful friends here, and I don't regret coming here at all. My first friend at San Juan was Nicole uh, Bay Smith. Um, over the years, while I lost touch with other friends, she and I have remained steadfast in our relationship. My most favorite class was in my freshman year when Nicole and I were in science together. The mix of kids in that class was a blast, and it was easy. It was an easy class to ace. Um, my sophomore year was also easy, and I breezed through it, making fairly good grades and staying on my parents' good side. Uh, every year since my freshman year, I participated in the hall decorating, and that was um, one of my most enjoyable, one of the most enjoyable um, activities at San Juan Um I definitely remember struggling with math in my junior year. Um, it's not that my teachers weren't able to help me, I just couldn't grasp the concept of math. But um, I think a lot of my classes have been more enjoyable and fun because of the teachers. Like, I know some students, they come, they come finally with certain teachers, but, and I found that two teachers that I um, became attached to or liked or had fun with classes, mostly with Ms. Hankins and Ms. Calusa, they made their classes fun to be in, and the learning was enjoyable. My senior year overall was the most fun, but it was also the most difficult. There are fun activities to go through, and being a senior always lends an air of superiority over the lower class. But on the other hand, the knowing that you have to have a certain amount of credits to graduate underlies the seriousness of it. At the time, again, math um, was hard for me, but because I had enough credits, um, there wasn't that much of a, like, a serious issue this year. So um, I didn't participate in a lot of activities throughout the year, but the ones that I did go to were fun and they were worth it. But if, and as I think back now, I wish I'd done a few things differently. But overall, I'm satisfied with the way my high school experience has played out. 
My years at San Juan have allowed me to begin to further my education, to hold a career out in the world as I go on to college to branch out in the criminal justice system. I have made a lot of friends and I will miss each and every one of them, but I'm sure we will keep in touch and grow older together and laugh at all the dumb things we have said and done over the last four years. I hope I have somehow made a difference in someone's life while attending this great school. As I look to the future, I envision my own children going here as well. But that's not for a long, long time. See you at every single reunion because I plan on going and showing off my accomplishments. My friends and teachers. Okay, my name is Erin Carpenter, and I just want to start by saying congratulations, class of 2004. Um, first, I'd like to say congratulations to 2004, and then all the work has finally paid off now. Um, for some of us, the last four years seemed like an endless journey, and we just couldn't wait to get through it. Um, I can remember when my first day was here at San Juan, and I was in a new school, there was new rules, new people. I wasn't used to it at first, and it has a way of growing on you. Um, I can remember the football games, the spirit weeks, hanging out with your friends at lunch, going to the rallies, going to the dances, all those fun activities, and those are some of the things that I'm never gonna forget. Um, in high school, one of the most important um, aspects to me was the friends. You made like many friendships. A lot of them didn't stay, but the ones that stayed are the ones that you're gonna have for a lifetime. Um, when you need someone to talk to, those are the people you can go to. When you're having trouble in classes or just not getting along with your teachers, you can go to them and talk to them about stuff. Um, with the help of most friendships and some great teachers and determination, I have been put here today. Um, I once heard a quote by Thomas Edison, which stated, many of life's failures are people who gave up when they didn't realize how close they were to success. But we are all here today, and we are all fighting with great will and persistence. Now we are here moving on to the next step in our life, as we all will, and choose our different paths that has that life has to offer. I hope that all of you find joy, happiness, and great success in all that brings you away, in all life brings you away. Once again, congratulations to the class of 2004. We did it. We did it. And Anna, speak up. Okay. Um, my name is Anna John, and um, hello everyone. It's a pleasure to be here today. Um, it's also a pleasure to tell you that this school year is almost over. Um, for the past 12 years, we've all shared the same path. We share the, um, we share the same memories and experiences that a school can bring. After dreaming of graduating since we first jumped off the bus on the first day of kindergarten, it's finally here. It's amazing how time flies by so fast, isn't it? I can clearly still remember myself in first grade playing with building blocks and building things out of Play-Doh. I can remember myself in elementary school where we all first learned that two plus two is four. Um, we've all been through middle school, which lasted for two years, and finally reached high school. When I first started high school as a freshman, um, it seemed like this day would never come. I remember saying that I wouldn't miss a thing and would be thrilled to get out of here. Well, I was wrong. There are a lot of things to miss. I will miss all of my teachers that I had at San Juan High School, and especially my friends that I have made during my time at San Juan. I would like to especially thank Ms. Defoe for letting me realize how much I love to read, and Ms. Twella for helping me understand that. Thank you for everything you have done to help me graduate. So here I am. And what is graduation? Some people say that it's the end of dependence and the beginning of freedom. Others say that it's the best year, the end of the best years of anyone's life. For some people, it's just another regular day, no different from any other. Everyone has their own opinion of what graduation is. However, I'm sure that there is one same worry on everyone's mind right now, and that worry is what's next. There are a million things that can happen to any of us in our future lives, and everyone's life is unique, radically different from any other. We've waited for 12 long years to stand on a, more than half our lives, to stand on a stage and wear a funny hat and robe. <laughs> 12 of our 18 years on this planet have been spent towards working towards a single night. Well, this is it. Our paths from now on are party. Here from, our, from here on out, each of us will go our own way. Everyone's life and decisions are what they make it alone. I wish I could give you some useful advice but I'm in the same shoes as you are. So just like me, you will have to find your own way. 
Some advice that seems useful is don't remember the past unless it's something that makes you smile. In the years to come, remember your high school years and I'm sure that a smile will appear on your face. No matter where you go or where you end up, don't forget to have fun. Last of all, on the list of high school memories is graduation. And here we are, congratulations. <laughs> How did I know she wears a Lakers today? <laughs> one of you has been a trademark forever. Uh, I got you, Mr. Phil. Why do you want to be TV? No shout outs for you. <laughs> so what about when she's on TV? <laughs> yeah. Okay, you ready? Uh -huh. Okay, I'm Angelica You know, you guys know. Um, high school is a very important time in one's life. The high school people look forward to many events. There's proms, there's dances. There's sports, there's making friends, and finally graduation. Um, as a freshman, one thinks it's all fun and games, but as time goes by, one becomes a seer and realizes that it's time to become an adult. I can remember when I first came to San Juan. It was in my 10th grade year and had just moved from Texas. Um, I thought that people were going to be stuck up and mean, but I was wrong. I made friends so fast. Um, people were nicer. Um, I've been through so many trials and tribulations here at San Juan. I've lost some friends and I made some. I will always remember high school. I found myself. Um, I've learned so much. There were times where I didn't want to go to San Juan, but if I had ever left, I would have never had great teachers like Mr. Willard, Mr. Myers, and Mr. Fowler. Um, my mom once always said, enjoy your high school years now because when they're gone, um, because when you get in the real world, it's hard. I just wanted to thank everyone at San Juan High School for making my high school year the best. Um, and I will never forget. gotten the chance to, I'm almost at a loss for words. There are many obstacles to climb so that we face over, uh, over the course of our lives. And now that we're closing the book on high school, it's time to look back and think about 
everything we've been through. There's no more gym, no more this required, or no more that required class. And as we move on, we think about all the teachers that, you know, irritated us and, you know, everything bad, you know, everything good. God, I'm getting all flustered. But never again will we be out on senior square listening to music hanging out in class, in the classroom with our friends, or going to another senior forum. I can tell you that I was not at all a full-blown lover of everything that has to do with high school. But now that I'm leaving everything behind, I'm going to have to say honestly that I will have, I'm going to miss it. I never thought I would say that. Now that we have closed the book on high school, we move on to bigger, more exciting things. Some of us are going straight on to college. Some perhaps will get married. And still others will take on the challenging task of becoming professional thumbs. It is up to us. Oh, yeah. And that is the exciting thing. The opportunities ahead and what we have accomplished thus far are reasons to celebrate. This is huge. Some have struggled simply to make it this far. I have, and others have, perhaps had, it, had an easier time. But we all made it here today, and that counts. Congratulations, class of 2004. Let's show the entire world that the so-called Generation X will shake the world. We can lead the world in the right direction. Hold your heads high and let's ride for the wheels fall off. Congratulations to the class of 2004, you did. Do I have to say the name? I really do? Okay, <laughs> Tiffany Bucky. Okay, when I look back at my past four years of high school, I feel like I have been a ship cloistered in the safe harbor of San Juan. Her teachers have been my carpenters and have built me to withstand the stormiest of oceans. Her counselors have been my captains. They have guided me and prepared me for the mysterious waters of the future. My friends and fellow students have been my anchor. They have helped me weather the storms of high school. Storms that include AP tests, SATs, college choices, yearbook deadlines, heartbreaks, and so much more. But now the time has come to sail away from the harbor and go out to sea. Where will our voyages take us? College, military, or straight to a career in the workforce? But like the sailors and adventurers from which I draw my comparison, we are excited, relieved, and apprehensive about what lies ahead. As for me, I'm going to UC Davis in the fall where I'll major in history and prepare myself for medical school. And although I am anxious about what lies ahead, my new classes, making new friends, and paying for my education, I'm eager to see what happens next and where the winds will guide my sails. If there are any words of wisdom that I could share with you that I'm inspired to live my life by, it would be these by, um, it would be these by, sorry. It would be these by Mark Twain. 20 years from now, you'll be more excited by the things that, or you'll be more disappointed by the things that you did do than by the ones that you didn't. So, throw off the balance, sail away from the safe harbor, and catch the trade winds in your sails. Explore, dream, discover. Congratulations, class of 2004. Hey, Brent. I'm about to embarrass myself in front of all you. Katie? Yeah. Never. Yeah. 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 And it's finally that time we've all been waiting four years to reach. It is a time where we step outside our conformity of high school and test our skills against the real world. Graduation. Remember how we got here? Senior year. Supposedly the fastest and most laid back year of high school. A common misconception. It is a year of hectic schedules full of last minute credits, nights on end with only a few hours of sleep, 
piles of homework teachers feel are necessary to prepare us for college. It is easier to worry about college, applying for college, aptitude tests for college. Keeping up the grades for college while still trying to keep up some sort of social life. It's easier for dances, parties, cruising, senioritis, rallies, pranks, and the almost uncontrollable desire to cry whenever you hear the alma mater. Junior year, the hardest year of high school. It's year the preparing for college really begins. The year for SATs and college prep classes, searching for the right school, looking through and applying the stacks of scholarships, laying out the pieces to your future. You are more mature, which means more responsibility. Driving, later curfew, sleep deprivation. It's the year you begin to find yourself, a year you develop your own personality, a year of many firsts. First prom, first varsity letters, first feeling of independence from the watch of your parents. Sophomore year, the easiest year of high school. It is a year full of simple classes, driver's ed, PE, world history. Not much can go wrong. Finally accustomed to the flow of high school, it is the year you can look at the new freshmen and laugh at how confused they seem. A year to still remember the feeling of being in their shoes. No longer at the bottom of the food chain, but still fighting to stay alive. Freshman year, the most frightening year of high school. It is being lost in a maze of classrooms, late to class, and still trying to find H2. A year full of new experiences. Rallies, dances, real essays, lectures. It is a year to wa watch your back at every corner because you heard the rumors that the seniors were on a canning spree. <laughs> a year to be scared, helpless, awkward, yet excited, interested, eager, all at the same time. These were our last four years here at San Juan. No matter where we go in life or what happens to us, we will always remember our time here. They'll be those good memories, winning hall decorating the third year in a row, or the guy's damp drill routine at twerk, <laughs> or the dry ice bombs in science. There will be those bad memories, being called on in class while caught in a daydream, watching Sam Juan lose the homecoming game again. <laughs> yeah. This has been our home away from home. Our only source of normal in these not so normal teen years. No matter what you thought while you were here, whether you disliked some of the teachers, got annoyed with a few of the people, or hated the food, you will always miss this place. No matter how many times you said, I hate this school, or I can't wait till I'm out over the course of these last four years, the thought of this place will always bring fond memories. So go, move on, live out the next stage of your life. But remember San Juan and what it means to you, and let a smile come over your face each time you do. Oh. <laughs> yes, I know that's what I was thinking. I was like, what? The <laughs> um, My name is Martin Guru. And the purpose of most graduation speeches is to tell you to go forth, to march into the future to the beat of a different drummer, to embrace your destiny, and to make a difference as you plunge into the world headlong. What I want to say to you today is a little different. I want you to enjoy, just for a short time between now and then, the moment when there are no tests to be taken, no grades to be earned, no homework to be completed, no classic novel to be read. Just, to, just for today, enjoy being yourself before you embark on the journey for the rest of your life. This is the most difficult of tasks because there is no place to fall into, no mold to fit. It is a lonely task where you cannot depend on your group to carry you, the internet to supply you with information, or a map to guide you. You must set aside what your friends expect, what your parents demand, and what your job requires. Set aside what the media feeds you, the government tells you to believe, and what society expects from you. You must look every day at the choices you are making and determine if they are in line with who you are and what you believe in for the choices you make determine the person you will be. This is the task of life. Figure out who you are, making all of it as you go along. Acknowledging that you are the best, a work in progress. It is an ongoing task and one that is never quite done, and one that always holds surprises as you look at yourself from a different angle and see something different entirely. It is easy to think that reading the required classics that every story has been told, every possible noun and verb strung together, 
But one story remains to be written, most certainly, the story of your life. Each of us holds authorship to that tale. We know the fact that everyone must write his or her own story. It's a basic tr truth that every child knows but somehow forgets, as we are taught to color within the lines and write an essay according to the rules of Jane Schaefer. We have learned to want the things that others want for us instead of the things we want for ourselves. We have become convinced that wanting what others wanted and doing what others want us to do was better, or at least easier than figuring out what we wanted for ourselves. Thus, it became hard to know what, where our wants and characters began and, what, and where others' wants and influences ended. So just for today, just for the moment, put down the burdens of expectations of others and reveal in who you are. It's real what we are. Put down the heavy burden of your expectations and put down your backpacks. Enjoy the lightness of this moment and bask in the glory of accomplishment. Today you are done. Today you are your own person. Today is a good day. Today is graduation day. Tiffany Anderson. Uh, as I stand here today, I recall, I recall a phrase that should be present in our daily lives, and especially this momentous occasion. I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. The little steam engine that could. Today is probably one of the happiest days of most of our lives. We must, however, remember the steps it took to reach the stage today. The first nine years of our education was compromised of listening, reading, memorizing, basically following our teaching, seeking every direction. Uh, then came that fateful day when we entered the doors of high school and began the long journey to our independence. Teachers no longer told us what to do. They instead challenged us to think for ourselves, to analyze the information that we were given, and to disagree with it if we dared. During these past four years, I have overcome challenges I believe existed only in our wildest dream. I enrolled in classes with teachers who held on to the notion that their class was the only one important. These teachers know to whom I am speaking. <laughs> now that I look back on these classes, I realized that teachers did not believe that their class was the only one that mattered. They were merely challenging us to excel beyond our own limitations and to set goals that we did not believe we could meet, but they knew we could. These goals not only include passing AP tests or getting a part in the school play, they also include getting an A in calculus or English or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. We have been taught math. English, science, history, the list goes on. But thanks to these teachers, we are prepared to enter a world outside these, outside the walls of the San Juan High School. Our families and friends have played an equal important role in preparing us for the world. They did this by offering support in difficult times, having high expectations when we had none, calling us when the alarm clock just wasn't enough and providing chauffeur services when our cars were non-existent. But most importantly, they've offered love, acceptance, and encouragement when we could not find it within ourselves. As I stand here today, ready to graduate, knowing that when we leave, we will conquer our own goals. I know this because I know that we all received a strong foundation on which to build a bright future. So, as I toss my cap up into the air, I do with great joy, some fear, and the confidence of knowing I can. Thank you. Matt Hanson. When I first came to San Juan as a sophomore from the Bay Area, I was angry. I was angry that I was placed at this school because of its highly negative reputation. That, well, that my parents and I had from a friend of ours who had some knowledge of this district. And now, I'm still angry, but it's for different reasons, such as certain revelations I've come to understand about the brutal, nat brutal nature of the human race. But I don't go into that. Over my three short years at San Juan, I've come to appreciate it for some of its finer qualities, particularly the teachers, who have helped me to discover myself and learn to express myself. I now believe that I was meant to come here, and that I was meant to meet the people that I have, for because of them, I have made significant changes in my life that I believe to be for the better. When I came here, I was a complete and utter loner, an attitude which I carried over from my previous school. 
Then I met some people to whom I could actually relate. I won't name them because I know who they are, but I will say that they were the first people to whom I was truly able to open my soul, and the first people with whom I want to keep in touch. They allowed me to begin to express my true opinions, which helped me along with my own personal awakening, found a part of the Cajun path. Now, because of them, I have found my true spiritual nature, and I am no longer held down by what I was taught to be. Rather, my life has risen because of, by what I have discovered about myself. Well, since I don't have anything else to say about my experience here, I'd like to take the rest of my time to say a final farewell to all of my peers. Despite any differences we may have had, I prefer to leave on good graces. I'd like to start this by quoting one of my favorite songs. It's not a very popular song, but it still has a powerful meaning behind it. It's called In Time by, by an artist named Mark Hawley. He says, In time there'll surely come a day. In time all things shall pass away. In time you may come back, some say, to live once more, or die once more. But in time, your time will be no more. Well, the song was written for a movie as an assassin's farewell to his victim. It can be related to the ending of any sort of life or career, such as high school career. In this part of the song, he says that in time, all things die, but may come back in another form to live again. I hope that my fellow students will leave with this understanding, that all things must come to an end and that the end to one event is always the beginning to another. Thank you. So far, you have a trip. That's one good sign. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my name is Caitlin Sullivan. Um, how do you say goodbye? It's a word that has so much meaning. Graduation is more than a day. It has been the overcoming of many obstacles while keeping our goal in sight. It is something we have worked hard to accomplish. Not only have these past four years have been dedicated to this day, but our entire education has been a series of stepping stones up to this moment. It really all began when five, we were five years old, beginning kindergarten, and we were asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? Your answer to this question, whatever it was, was the first step for making a dream come true. And now it's time to take that leap. High school has been a journey, but now an even greater journey begins. It's the journey of life. What you do on your journey is up to you, but wouldn't it be great to do something amazing? Maybe the answer to that famous question has changed a bit since the age of five, but you have the chance to make it happen. Whether it's becoming a doctor, a musician, or a teacher, it's up to you. You have already come this far, right? I quote Mark Twain when I say, 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the ones you did do. High school holds a place in all of our minds, I'm sure, full of many memories, good and bad. It could have been the worst time of your life, or it could have been the best. It might have even been a little bit of both. I hope that each and every one of you has learned something to take with you through life. In fact, I know we have all learned something, school-related or not, because that is what high school is, a life lesson. And who knows with how many high school friends we will actually remain in touch. But that doesn't mean they haven't been an essential part of our high school experience. I know that I will never forget the friends I have made. There are two memories every graduate should have. First is at least one amazing, unforgettable moment that brings a smile to your face simply by thinking about it. And second is a mistake that you wish you could forget, but you just can't because you've learned from it. Now is the time to be grateful for all of it and move forward. So as of now, have no regrets. And as Gandhi said, you must be the change you wish to see in the world. As I say goodbye, I say it without the intention of meaning it to be forever. I say it with the feeling that our paths will cross again, somehow, some way. Because there's always our 10-year reunion, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, I get it. <laughs> this is the top graduation speech number two. I really want to get my Hey, they call me Fedros. Fedros Yabo Club Fed called me what you like. So, so last night I was looking through our new yearbooks for my mom. And while we were looking at them, she stopped me and she said, uh, your school is different. It seems like it's a warm and friendly environment. And I said, that's exactly it. San Juan's like no other. 
I, when I was falling asleep last night, I was thinking about how other people on the outside of San Juan think of San Juan. They see it different too, but but I hate to say it, they see it as ghetto. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me wonder why they think such absurd and unsubstantiated things. It can't be the way the school looks. It's beautiful, it's full of history, it's full of life. It can't be the way the school looks. According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, a ghetto is a quarter of a city where its members of minority groups live. So maybe they think our school's ghetto because we have diversity. Is that wrong? San Juan's colorful. San Juan is diverse. San Juan is not a ghetto. <laughs> <laughs> Here are some demographic statistics about our school. At San Juan, our white population is only 65.5%. That includes the Middle Eastern and Slavic populations. At most other schools in our district, it's in the upper 80%. We have a 15.2% Hispanic population, 9.5% African American population, and 5.1% Asian American population. That's not wrong, that's fine. San Juan is colorful, San Juan is diverse. San Juan is not ghetto, San Juan is unique. I have friends at those other schools, and I ask them how often they see fights, they tell me, yeah, yeah, we see, we see a few fights a week. It's a lot. In San Juan, you guys know we have long droughts without fights. Long droughts, no fights. It seems that here at San Juan, everybody's on the same team. We have unity in our diversity. It's a phenomenon. The student population in San Juan actually likes each other. <laughs> My dear friend Ryan Harris came to San Juan after three years at Del Campo one day. At his house, I asked him, You're right. <laughs> so, San Juan del Campo, which do you like better? He said, Without hesitation, I got it. This is my best hair, too. San Juan. <laughs> 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 I've never put on any frogs. I can be a dork and it's fun. <laughs> so, if I have a thesis, this is it. At San Juan, I can be a dork and it's fine. <laughs> At San Juan, I can be carefree and it's fine. At San Juan, I can be me and you can be you and that's fine. This is why San Juan is one of a kind, not because we're ghetto or not. It's because we have a warm and friendly environment. The best memories are built when we are ourselves. Without these false fronts, Student interaction at San Juan is natural. Student interaction at San Juan is a harmonic blend of different personalities in spite of what is supposed to separate us. My experience over the last four years has been nothing but memories that I'll never be able to forget. I'm going to ask you guys to do one last thing. Just get in your own zone. And for 15 seconds of silence, think, think of the memories that Caitlin was talking about there that you can't help but have a smile on your face. Think of the memories that you cherish the most. Just be in your own zone and start.
Four years ago, I never dreamed I would be on the path that I am now. I made friends that I will keep forever and lost some that I will never forget. The wonderful world of Carefree High School is over. No more dances, no more rallies, no more football games, no more winning hall decorating or prom. <laughs> we are now leaving the world of high school. And though I am happy to be leaving, I know I will fondly look back on these years and truly refer to them as the best years of my life. Good luck to everybody out there. Reach for the moon, because even, you, even if you miss, you will still land among the stars. I get shorter and it wasn't good in the first place. Okay. I can bounce. Uh, my name's Shaquana. Dependence can be defined as relying on someone else. Dependence is a side effect of inexperience. As a child, our inexperience is apparent. We cannot walk, ride a bike, or drive a car without some type of support. Eventually, our life gave enough strength so we no longer had to hold someone's hand or grip the table in apprehension. On our bikes, we no longer needed our training wheels or our parents to hold the back, just in case. We no longer needed an adult to sit in the passenger seat or have someone to guide us. As we gain experience, we all become our own persons. High school has helped to give me the experiences I needed so that I could become my own person. I've held my head up when others thought I couldn't do it. I've gone the extra mile to show others who think they are smarter than me that actually they are not. <laughs> I continue to be who I want, even if others disagree. Experience and having the confidence to be me has made me realize the true evil of most human beings. So I'm happy that I'm graduating and can meet a cool group of new evil people in college. <laughs> Hasta luego, the class of 2004. Hopefully some of you won't end up too close to my future home in a ditch. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Courtney. Um, my first draft of this speech was uh, pretty sappy. I tried to make it all meaningful and metaphorical, but um, it didn't really work. So when I read over my speech, it did not remind me of our class. The class of 2004 is one that's always laughing, weird, having tons of fun, and uh, procrastinating. Your typical high school class, but we just did it so well. We took these last four years in stride. These have been the years of September 11th and its aftermath, economic changes, threats, fear, and war. These have been the years of The Matrix, Lord of the Rings, and Harry Potter. These have been the years of unique freshmen, priceless sophomores, minty juniors, and all natural seniors who had a clue. But with all the changes that we experienced inside and out of San Juan, one thing remained the same. We counted on our sense of humor to get us through it. Whether it was events, homework, relationship problems, drama, or anything else you find at high school, we would confide in our friends going through the same things during our years here. So much happened and so much changed. Variety is the spice of life, but laughter sustains us. Congratulations, class of 2004 master procrastinators. We finished our last task. Good luck to you all. It's been a ride. <laughs> About 13 years ago, a group of little guys and gals walked into a classroom for the very first time. This was a diverse batch of kindergartners who came from different backgrounds and different beliefs. Some were shorter than others, some were quite skinny, others were not the least bit skinny. <laughs> were of the type that ate crayons and picked their noses in public. <laughs> and a few years down the line, these little kids were no longer little kids. They were little people. In sixth grade, graduating from elementary school. Four years ago, this group of kids became teenagers and entered high school for the first time. Surprisingly, after so many years spent together, they have only grown more diverse. Some are tall, some aren't. Some prefer to sag, others have spiked or bleached hair. A few, or rather quite a few, seem to have made nose pick in their full time occupation. <laughs> <laughs> Others come to school ready to learn or become dedicated athletes. These young scientists, artists, and athletes are the future of our world. They are the class of 2004. We are the class of 2004. And this year, comrades, is the year. <laughs> this year is our year. It's amazing how 13 years 
seemed like an eternity when we were standing at year one, or year two, or even year ten. But now when we have reached the end of year thirteen and can look back at it all, we realize how fast all those years flew by us. The last four years were the fastest, and despite this, they taught us the most. More than all the others combined, in fact. We learned a lot about the world, but more importantly, we learned about ourselves and how we will fit into this world that we will inherit. So, let us hope that the older generation does not mess things up much worse than they already have <laughs> while we are in college. Uh, my name is Katie Johnson, number 16, woo -woo. Uh, <laughs> Hello classmates, this is a year of many great endings. A year where we saw the final installment of Lord of the Rings, uh, the last battle of good and evil on Angel, and said goodbye to friends. But now I find myself having to say goodbye to the people with whom I spent the last four years. And unlike a movie or a television show, I'm having almost a hard time saying goodbye. So instead, I decided to say thank you. Thank you, San Juan, for opening your doors and my eyes to a different world. These last four years, you've given me so much, from memories to knowledge and lasting friendships. Now to my classmates, the best class San Juan has seen. I consider it my privilege to be sharing the stage with you today, or soon. <laughs> Not every memory was a happy one, but it made me appreciate them much more. Thank you for helping me survive for these years and I hope that I could return the favor. San Juan will miss your presence, for it will leave a great void. Finally, I want to thank the teachers, the true heart of San Juan. Each of you have touched our lives and have made us a better person. Without your dedication, hard work, and caring, not many of us would be here. Now, we go on to our new lives, some leaving these things behind. I hope you all have great success in your future endeavors, and I hope that when life knocks you down, you know you can always get up. So unlike a movie or a television show, this is not our ending, only a new path. And wherever this path may take you, always remember San Juan is where you started. And one final word, don't think of this as an ending. It's just a spin-off from the beginning. Thank you, San Juan. Thank you, class of 2004. Thank God it's over. Thank you, bye.